<clears throat> so I'm Aaliyah, Dr. Aaliyah Kaneakala. I married this guy. Ben. Kaneakala. And this is Fady, our youngest daughter. This is Fady, and Phoenix is in the back Phoenix over is in there. The back. Um, both of our, our businesses are named after our kids. So we had Phoenix, and um, when we decided to open up a treatment center, we named it Phoenix Rising. And then when we brought my private practice over, um, we thought it was only fair to name it after our other daughter. So um, Fate. Fate, which is on that window over there, but we gave her a PH spelling just to be creative, you know? Um, and so we got into oils. Um, it was actually Phoenix had a little friend that she shared a cubby with at preschool and we ran into them at gymnastics and the mom, Sherry, and I were talking. We became really good friends sitting there, you know, 45 minutes every week. And um, she started talking to me about oils and she was like corporate world, right? Like business, just kind of like how you were saying started out, but wanted um, to have a cleaner household and know what like was going into her family system. So she started getting into the oils and she always tells this story, and it's on our first video too, of like she would go to, you know, like a Whole Foods and get oils and didn't realize that she didn't quite even know what was in those oils. And so that's why she switched to Young Living because you always know it's total transparency, like what it is, and it's the purest okay. essence of it. So then side note, we were opening up the treatment center and I got into a very strong phase of um, alchemy and studying it in the stages of alchemy. And so I was very interested in, um, it's like a, a 12 step process. And um, this man, Edinger, and he's kind of a Pacifica sort of guy. All these things that we've been talking about today, right? They always all come together. Um, studied it, but studied it as far as like psychologically based. And then being a, a therapist, then I learned that like Freud and Jung like back in the day, they each took time out to go and study this on their own. So there's a physical process of how everything moves, right? So fire burns down, the first stage is called cal calcinatio. Everything burns to the ash before it starts up again, right? So again, like our Phoenix rising, it's, it's what we all do on a regular basis. Um, and in alchemy, it's like finding the, the actual like life essence of every chemical property when it changes. And so Young Living, when she started talking to me and she's like, oh, it's the life essence of the plant, that was the moment that I was hooked. And so we started talking and she came to our center and we started using oils for the groups. And um, I remember doing a men's group for a while and this one guy I put on release and he would cry by the end of every group, <laughs> poor guy. And he was like, I don't like this one, <laughs> you know, but then he'd be like, crying by the end and opening up and like getting some stuff out. So we started to see how powerful the oils were in helping get down some of those barriers. And then Sherry and I were talking one day and I was like, it'd be really cool to pair the oils with the 12 steps. And she was like, I don't think anybody's done that. So we started it. And then my husband was like, well, you're gonna need a 12 step guy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like you can't do it without. Yep. So then, so then we brought him in on it too. Yep, and that was kind of the beginning of how we created the book that you guys now have and called Stepping Forward. And just incorporating the oils and we did a lot of work in deciding what oil should be used and where they should be put. So in the book, it'll tell you exactly what spots to put the oils on and putting it in the diffuser and things like that, so. Mm -hmm. Well, and you brought like the Bible, right? Like that is <laughs> the book. The it reference guy. Yeah. yeah. Because it tells you every like single oil and then it tells you all the the groups of the oils all the blends too right so i i put them up here um but so if we're going to focus on step two today um and i love i love that you guys are the people that are here like this is beautiful um to have another therapist to have people that understand and have like understand the world of recovery right and what it is to like work through the steps um I found that a lot of times when people work through the steps, it's, right, our loved ones would never know that it's not a linear process. Like people, it's not like, oh, I'm gonna work on step one today and tomorrow I work on step two and then three, you know, and like, I'll be done in two weeks and it'll be great, right? Like, it just, it never works that way. And then there's so many stalls, I feel like, that people come across when they're working the steps, right? There's all those pauses that they find. Um, because there's fear involved and there's change involved, right? And 
when someone finds an addiction in their life, it, it becomes a coping tool. And it's not necessarily, it's not the best one. We all know that, right? But it helps. It helps them be distracted. It helps them not feel. It helps them not have to deal with other people. It helps, it helps in a lot of ways. And then it becomes where it doesn't help at all, right? Um, and when we have any sort of coping skill and it works to any degree, we always have a hard time letting go of it, right? Um, and so what I love about the oils is that it, it's gently going to help people let go of some of those coping skills because in working those steps and that moving forward, right, it's getting farther away from something that you knew that worked, but we don't always know what's to replace it, right? And I know it's a weird word to use that it worked, but it like, addiction helps people get through. It worked until it didn't. Mm -hmm. Right, you know? And it wasn't actually ever working, right? It doesn't ever <laughs> actually work, but um, people feel like it does, or it, it helps them not feel devastated or alone or remember their traumas or whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? So, um, so yeah. Uh, so I like using the oils because it helps soften where, you know, um, someone uses a coping mechanism and you go to like take it away. Sometimes we clutch on even harder, right? Consciously or subconsciously. So um, step two, I'm going to let um, Ben talk more about like the step two, but the oil that we chose was surrender. And I love this one. <clears throat> um, so the blend of surrender, and we have it in the diffuser so that we're all just going to be feeling so good today, right? <laughs> like at the end of this, all we are going to be surrender. like so stress-free. <laughs> um, but the overall blend, um, it helps get bring down aggression, levels of anger, and our ideas of control. So when we're like really holding on to certain thoughts, right? And step two like this is important because some people are relentless like no I don't want to believe I don't want to believe in something bigger than me so it relieves stress and tension but the ingredients so I broke it down and I used actually the little pocket type thing and this is why this oil is so amazing um, okay so lavender is used to calm or relax and it balances us both physically and emotionally it can improve concentration and our, our mental like capacity or our ability to take in new ideas, right? So that's that's the lavender. And then you go over to lemon and it promotes a clarity of thought and purpose. It brings on relaxation as well and it fights depression. So our friend Sherry, that's not here that we adore, she always says like, you wanna feel happier, put in the citrus ones, right? The citrus oils always like alleviate our negative moods, but. And then black spruce, I thought this one was super exciting. Um, the Lakota Indians used to use black spruce to strengthen their ability to communicate with the Great Spirit. That's literally what they thought that oil, that plant did. So it pulls from that and it's supposed to release our emotional blocks and it brings about like a certain level of grounding for us. Um, and then the Roman chamomile, it's calming, it combats depression, insomnia and stress, it minimizes anxiety and irritability in our nervousness dispels anger and it helps release emotions linked to the past and that's again that's why I feel like when we bring the oils in the step work has to be done we have to dig in people need the support right therapists sponsors everyone Community, but um, this is where like the oils I feel like it can, they can help us like let go of those things that are linked to the past like how powerful would that be right um, and then Angelica is considered the Holy Spirit root, or it's the oil of the angels. It's believed that it came from like divine origin, the Angelica plant, and it assists in the release of pent up emotions, restores memories to the state before the trauma was experienced. So I guess it's like EMDR in a bottle, right? <laughs> like, wouldn't that be awesome? You know? <laughs> Sorry, only you guys think I'm funny. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> and then the mountain savory is um, an energizer and a motivator. So I love that it's like trying to get rid of depression and lower anxiety and do all these things. And at the very end, it's like, we're gonna energize and motivate you too, right? Like, that's so nice to put you kind of through the ringer. Um, so that was the oil that we found was the most suiting, right, to go with. And it's supposed to be put on the amygdala. 
right? And so the amygdala is, is in there, so you can put it on the top of the head or you can just breathe it in and it'll go to the limbic system and calm down the emotions um, or just have it in the diffuser, right? So that's kind of the idea. Um, in the book, there's these little drawings and it's, they're so cute because they're very gender neutral. And then it has where it's supposed to be placed, but it's a hard position to probably like get to, right? Um, so you can do a couple of the oils. I'll put them on the top of the head. When I teach dance, oh, love bug, here you go. Um, <clears throat> I put them on the top of the girls' heads too at times, or my daughters, like if they're having a rough time, I just walk by them and put oils on their heads. They don't need to know the difference, <clears throat> right? Um, and it, it helps. So you can put it on the top of the head, you can put it up behind the ears to like get it to soak through or just breathe it in our diffuser. So, um, and these oils, that's part of why we love them as well, is that it gets to the limbic system within about like 20 seconds and starts helping us feel a different sensation, right? So, yeah. Any questions so far on some of the stuff that Aaliyah mentioned or talked about or you might have questions about before we go into step two? Go ahead, Yeah. And the, the oil blend of mm -hmm. Surrender, mm -hmm. the angelica that's in there, that's not the same as the white angelica. Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -mm. Yeah. I, which is like one of my other favorite oils. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in my, my other life for a couple days a week, I teach dance. We were talking about I used to teach dance. I still teach dance. And when, before the kids go on stage, I put white angelica on the top of their heads because I try to protect from any injuries or, you know, fears, slips, things like that on stage. So it's just kind of my way of trying to like protect them and send them out, you know, or big things. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that's one of my other favorite oils. I keep it in my backpack at all times, <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, is that one of your faves? No, it, I just know it's like what got thirty six different oils in it. Yeah, and it's it's yeah, a huge and it's blend. For protection, mm -hmm. and I just wondered if they actually put that blend in that blend. Mm. So that was. I mean, I would, I would think so, but. I think know. Angelica is a separate flower. Yeah, well, and because this is all the single oils that go into that blend, and then white angelica is the blend of all the other oil, of all oils, so angelica's probably, I would guess, in there, right? Maybe. But yeah, I thought, especially these two, the fact that they called it the oil of the angels, like, that's uh -huh. such a cool name, you know? Mm -hmm. I loved that. Yeah. I And I had to look up Mountain Savory. I, before we started this process, I was like, is that an actual oil? Like, that's such a funny name to me. But, yeah, I love that combo. Um, we used Surrender, again, it always goes back to dance with me. Um, dance and therapy are my, my two jams. But um, we have some older girls that have been doing these, like, really beautiful lyrical dances on stage. In the last competition, I put Surrender on all of them about 20 minutes before they went on stage. And it was, you could feel them from the audience. We went in the front and watched, and everybody was like, oh, and they came off stage, and they were all crying. Like, they had an experience that was so powerful, too. You know, it was just beautiful. It was nice to watch. It just helped them break through a little bit of, like, where I wanted them to not think so much on stage. Just perform. Just go out there. Not even perform. Just be authentic, right? Just go feel, live. Yeah. You, so you love oils, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're an oils gal. And she works in her recovery center, too. Oh, fantastic. So we True. like diffuse oils, but we don't really, um, like we haven't connected them with like the 12 steps. So that's why I was really interested in I'm so coming glad you today did. and mm -hmm. like learning how you're applying that and sharing that with others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you ever want us to come out and do a little in-service or talk about, you know, how we're using the oils and, and, the, and the steps, we'd be more than happy to do that also for anybody. And here as a center, we've done it the past like two years where we do um, once one oil per month and we do the 12-step oils. Mm -hmm. So um, I may have different stuff in my diffuser for seeing clients one-on-one, -on -one, but we'll have them in here every morning. So even though people will be on different steps during the time, it's just sort of that idea of having like a cohesiveness. So will like in February we do surrender all month long you know which is nice um, 
and then what are we in May? So right now we're in present time, which is um, to match step five. Mm -hmm. So like when Ben does his groups, which I feel like he should, his way of breaking down the steps to me is, is better than anyone I've ever heard. Not why I married him, but you know, it's up there. Partially. <laughs> his knowledge, his, his knowing. Um, <clears throat> So he, it's not like he in a group of a bunch of people that are all in different parts of their recovery, you know, we'll have um, some clients that will stay on with us for quite a while and keep coming to at least a group or two a week, you know, um, but they have, you know, six months, nine months, and then we have some that are, are just kind of freshly in. So he does the breakdown of the step and what it means and, and how to work it, but isn't going to necessarily walk them through the steps because he's not their sponsor, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not that one-on-one. -on -one, but he'll do breakdowns of the steps. So it's just getting them familiar and less afraid of the steps, right? Less overwhelmed by them, like. And know. then, you know, also breaking it down to where they can understand it. There's, you know, the steps, at least in my 30 years of recovery, you can use it and there's, there's different things you can use it with. You can look at it this way, you can look at it that way, you can apply it this way, you can apply it that way. It's so multifaceted in regards to at least my understanding of the 12 steps. So when we're when I'm teaching it in class, I get a feel where the clients are at. And if we're talking about step two that day, I'll break it down into something that they would understand. So step two might mean something totally different to me today than it does to the newcomer coming into the program. You know, so bringing it down to kind of their level or their understanding, you know, so where at least they can grab some of the concept is, is what I try and do. And same thing like with sponsees or you know, people you're working with in recovery. So just trying to make it uh, relatable, I guess, in that way. Yeah. Is that like where, um, I like how on each page it has like step one, like, and then it talks about the emotion, the oil, mm -hmm. the other side, the alarm point, and then mm -hmm. the way out, like mm -hmm. step one is like, I am empowered. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't ever like really had someone like focus on like that aspect it's usually more so on like the powerlessness mm -hmm. part so just seeing that that's already like really nice and is that something you came up with or like what you because I feel like to move forward like in the step um not just focusing on like the powerlessness mm -hmm. but then also like what um you can feel empowered by and like to mm -hmm. move forward and I think that's the forward. byproduct of that. Share solutions. So if they are going to share, we encourage them to share solutions, not just the problem, not just dumb. So if they did all this uh, during that week, they give themselves 20, 20 percent. And then for service, we say be of service to others, engage and participate and help your, your community, help set up and clean up at meetings, um, offer rides if you have a car and do volunteer work. So if they've done that over the past week, they give themselves 20 percent. Uh, spirituality, spirituality uh, we encourage them to get into some type of prayer or some type of meditation. If that's not their thing, uh, they can use meetings, they can go to church, uh, they can use art, reading, writing, uh, walks, anyway. journaling, exercise, things of that nature. So if they did all of that for the past week, they give them 20. Sponsored, they got to have one. Uh, we recommend to our clients that they find somebody that has at least five years of sobriety that have worked the steps at least a couple of times. Uh, call daily, meet weekly in person. Be honest about what's going on. Don't just go, yeah, I'm good. Thank you, sponsor. Okay, see you later. Um, and if they've done all of that, <laughs> then they get 20. And then program or the steps. Uh, work the 12 steps. So getting involved with the sponsor and working the 12 steps. Um, some of our clients aren't open to 12 steps, so we do other types of things. Um, like smart recovery, like smart recovery, or, or course in miracles, yeah, or things of that anything nature. that you know. My thing always is, I tell them like, if you were gonna go hike Mount Everest, wouldn't you take everything that you needed for survival <laughs> with you, right? Or would you be like, mm, I'm sure this windbreaker will be fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, one thing of water will be good. It's like, why not? Why not use what has been shown? to work why not use that and then use other things too right like but again like as a dancer it's like you take ballet it doesn't mean everybody's going to be a ballet dancer but like that's going to get you the most bang for your buck right 
this will too and it's always there it's always available right yeah. you can find it in any country so it's like do this and if you want to do smart recovery too if you want to go more the church route great if you want to take time and focus on therapy and do emdr and all these other great things do it but don't don't diss something that's saved like thousands upon thousands of lives right? just to be like, open you know just to be open to the whole process and things like that so that's what we try and offer our clients um, is this foundation. Um, so when we're talking about step one or step two, we're talking about them getting involved in all these facets of the program. So we go through this every week. We have clients that have zero points and we have clients that are up in the 90s, depending on how active and how, you know, how much they're participating. But it gives them an idea of, what we found out is that it gives them an idea of where they're at in their recovery program um, and what they need to work on still, because they're, they're kind of not doing so well in this one particular area or whatever it might be. Um, so it's become a very useful tool. Some people have been very uh, challenging. Uh, they're like, oh, I got higher than you. You know, you've been slacking this past week kind of a thing. <laughs> so there's some encouragement that also happens. Uh, we don't degrade people for having a low score. We try and encourage them to, to just be more open. Um, so the oils, and when we use the oils, um, it's to enhance what we're what we're doing. It's to help enhance and, and, and open them up for getting involved in these things if, if that's what needs to happen. Lower some resistance. Yeah. I think that this is brilliant. So this is our foundation. That Ben has done. Um, yeah. And I like it because it quantifies it for people because they're like, oh yeah, I'm doing good in my recovery. You know, and then you break it down like this and they're like, oh, well I actually only went to one meeting last week and well, I forgot to call my sponsor and you know. Like mm -hmm. sometimes, um, you know, the addictive brain, especially early on, will slip back into these old, like, habits or if we're not, you know, being proactive enough, like they're leaving too many doors open for relapse to mm -hmm. happen. So, um, so yeah, we do this once a week with them, usually on Fridays, to kind of remind them and hopefully gear them up. Like if they want to do better at it, then over the weekend, they're going to want to get to a couple meetings, right? Or call their sponsor. It's like a way of trying to keep them plugged in before mm -hmm. we go into the next week. Yeah. We just try everything we can, right? <laughs> so it's been pretty useful and it's, it's something that every week they know we're going to do a group with Ben and this is what we're going to do. And it ends up turning into a process group mm -hmm. because some of them are struggling. Some of them are struggling with these. And I'm like, okay, so if you're struggling with these, you know, how are you going to handle getting the job? How are you going to handle dealing with the coworkers, the boss, the this, the that, you know, and just kind of encourage them that this is just a resource. So this is one of the, the main foundational things, a step one, step two type of thing, um, and just encouraging, encouraging them to use all the resources that are available at their, at their hands and in their grips and using Phoenix Rising and everything that we offer here too. I like that idea because it, um, it shows how a good program uh, needs to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not going to be with us forever. Yeah. You know, we'll be here as long as they want to keep coming back and, you know, come for a group and stuff like that. So we have alumni that come back and, you know, clients that are still coming just for therapy or, you know, things like that. So we've become a foundational thing. But this is always, you know, one of the questions that I ask. So how's uh, the sobriety scale going? Hmm? How have you been doing with that? You the know? clients will joke that Ben will be doing a group on something else and someone will be saying something and he's like, well, that brings us back to the, and they're like, sobriety scale. Like, it's like, yeah, like it so we could be talking about any problem that they want to bring up or something that was, or something that was in the daily reflections or something like that. You know, we're on some other topic or whatever it might be. And uh, we're, we're dissecting the problem and we're digging in, digging in, digging in. And then I'll be like, okay, so now what do we do with this? And I'll, it'll come right back to the sobriety <laughs> scale. And I'll be like, oh, I wonder how meetings would help with this. Or I wonder how fellowshipping or, you know, getting people that are in recovery and active in their recoveries and all that kind of stuff. So it always comes back. Yes, they will go, oh, yeah, the sobriety scale. Here we go. And I don't use these terms necessarily with my clients, but I'll tell my clients on two different levels. Um, I have a lot of people that are struggling with, like, anxiety, right? And I also have a lot of clients that are um, in recovery. And then, of course, most of them struggle with both, right? And so I always talk to people about, like, when we build tools, um, 
that say for recovery, um, I have a client, she's doing well in her recovery and she goes to about three meetings a week and calls her sponsor and has coffee with another lady during the week and she reads her book every day. And so she'll talk about, um, and I'm really proud of her because early on in her recovery, she's like, you know, I don't want to change any of that because it's working. Mm -hmm. And I don't know exactly which of those pieces is helping me stay clean and sober, so I don't want to take any of them away, right? Like, why chance it? Which I think is really wise thinking. But then she came in one time and she was struggling, and I was like, well, your baseline of three meetings and your sponsor and coffee with a girlfriend and reading every day is good for your day-to-day -day life. You found that that works. But then when this happens, when this happens in the family or this happens with your child or this happens, you know, financially or whatever, then you have to add it in, right? So it's like, does everybody need to be at 100% to stay clean and sober? No, but you want that number as high as possible. But some people, their baseline could be like 80%, right? Some of it might move around, like it's not... Yeah, it moves around. It's progress, not perfection, right? But then if life gets tougher... Right, that's when we want to add it up, and I do the same thing with like um, I help all my clients with like with that anxiety like toolboxes, right? What's in your toolkit? What are the things that you need to do every day that keeps your anxiety at a level that's like tolerable for you, right? Oh well, your mother called you and it was the same old argument, or your father got on you about finances, or you know your boyfriend just broke up with you. Okay, now your anxiety's up. What are the other ones that we pull in, right? Because you can't. Your baseline won't get you through the hard days. Like your baseline gets you through your good days, right? It makes the good days good. When the days get harder, what else do you need to add in, right? So I feel like. Some